Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my second straight day of the NCAA tournament overview and what a day it was. Man, I still have this last game that's finishing up right now, St. Joe's Cincinnati, another very close game that I may be able to see the end of it in my reactions of this and man has it been quite the day of college basketball. I'll start out by recapping all these games. Uh, first we're going to start out with Let's go with Syracuse Dayton. Let's go in order. Syracuse really just blew out Dayton today. Dayton, there was a close first half. Dayton played all right in the first half. Hit some open jumpers, but Syracuse just took it to him in the second half. Awful showing by Dayton in the NCAA tournament. Then Villanova took care of UNC Asheville. Not a whole lot to say there. VCU beat Oregon State. Peyton the second. He is a quite the beast, to be honest. He really gave uh, VCU all that they could handle, but Mo Alley Cox and company really took it to... Uh, Really took it to Oregon State and really ran the score up into the 70s, and that's when I knew that they could get the victory. Then another upset of the day, Hawaii beating Cal. That's a really big upset, but a lot of people even predicted that upset. Cal had quite a few freshmen this year, and you just kind of knew that they may come in kind of nervous. And the foul calls in that game, there was a lot of foul trouble in the first half, if I remember right. If any of you guys are fans of either of that, let me know how, many, how you feel about that, because that was kind of ridiculous from what I saw, but I didn't know how close the game was called the whole entire game. But I just saw St. Joe's hit a three-point jumper to get them up two with five seconds left. Let's see the end of this game. Cincinnati's going to drive. Cincinnati's got to put this one up. A dish and a dunk. Are they going to count that? Oh, my. That is ridiculous. But let's continue on to this. Middle Tennessee State beat Michigan State 90-81 to in that. That is kind of disappointing because Michigan State out of the Big Ten, I would beat them twice, and I expected Michigan State to actually make a very deep run. I kind of predicted them to go at least to the Final Four, if not win at all, most of the things I predicted, but that obviously didn't happen. Tenzel Valentine, if you saw him post-game press conference, that was just kind of sad because he knew he let his team down quite a bit, and uh, he's a great player, and he's going to have a pretty good future in the NBA, but it's kind of sad to see him have such a poor game in his last showing in a Spartan uniform. Now, now into the Iowa game, your Iowa Hawkeyes just about blew it multiple times against Temple and really should have lost that game because they did anything they could to lose that game. They wanted to lose that game, it looked like. But Adam Woodbury, all the Iowa fans, you know that no one really gives Woodbury the credit he deserves because he does quite a bit there in the paint defensively where he doesn't block shots or not, even though he's seven foot. He does quite a bit for us defensively by talking and really just being a good player in the post. But even though his offensive game hasn't really developed that well, we still know that he still does enough for us to get the win. And today, that two-handed shove in the back, I'll admit that's probably a foul, but it doesn't matter. The basket counts. And let's keep on moving on. Oklahoma, Buddy Heald took care of Bakersfield, which really was kind of a close game for a lot of the game, but, but Buddy Heald was able to take over there and get that win. Maryland and South Dakota State was a very close game, but Maryland was able to edge out South Dakota State and get that win, 79-74. Wisconsin-Pittsburgh, that was a really bad game to watch if you're just a basketball fan because scoring both teams under 50 points, and it was just a really bad game in general for Wisconsin. We ended up edging out the win, which I am happy about because I want the Big Ten to go far. But hopefully they can improve in the tournament. They did get the win, 47-43. Next up, Stephen F. Austin beat West Virginia. I knew that's going to be a pretty good game because Stephen F. Austin likes to get up in you and really, really get you to turn the ball over. Teams turn the ball over the most against Stephen F. Austin the whole entire NCAA, whether that was the opponents they played or whether that was just them forcing you to turn it over. They proved that West Virginia turned the ball over quite a bit. And here's... Uh, Texas A&M and Green Bay. This is a pretty good close. This is a pretty close game in the first half, but it did turn out Texas A&M got that win, and they're actually going to not allow Cincinnati's dunk at the buzzer. And St. Joe's is going to get the 78-76 win. Wow, it's pretty. That was pretty close. That was a good game at the end. Of talking over this, I hope you guys enjoyed that game. Oregon just took care of Holy Cross. There's not a whole lot to say. Xavier beat Weber State. It's kind of close for quite a while, but Xavier was able to pull out there from the end. And then the game of the night, if not St. Joe Cincinnati, U and I Texas. I just got done watching that game, and oh man, what a game that was! Texas Taylor hit that hit that nice little floater to tie it up, and it inbounded, hits the half court, banks in the half court shot to win the game. U and I moves on to play Texas A&M, and I know U and I could probably make a pretty deep run in the NCAA tournament. 
Then Notre Dame, Michigan. Michigan gave Notre Dame anything, everything they could handle. Uh, Michigan really shoots the ball very well from the three-point line, but Notre Dame was able to pull that up. Beecham had a lot of, a lot of close baskets. St. Joe's and Cincinnati, like I just was talking about, a very close game all the way down to the wire. They just disallowed the dunk at the end. But that is the recap of all the games today. I'm going to talk about the teams I really liked on the second day. I really liked Oregon, even though they play 16 seed. Uh, it's really nice to see Oregon just come out and prove that they're the number one seed in the tournament. They deserve the number one seed in the tournament, and they really look like they deserve that, just blowing out Holy Cross. And I think St. Joe's may just get the same kind of beating that Oregon gave Holy Cross, but we'll have to see. I could definitely see St. Joe's actually A10. They had that beat, or not beat, um, I can't remember his name, but he is a very good player, the A10 player of the year. Uh, he could actually do quite a bit against Oregon, but I see Oregon run away with that one. And you and I, you and I being Texas, everyone knew that you and I was a really good team. They beat Wichita State in Evansville to get to the NCAA tournament on that game winner by West Washburn. But he, he's a heck of a player, and he could definitely lead this team past Texas A&M and even past Oklahoma and maybe into the Elite Eight. But that's asking for a lot, Texas A&M's a great team. Next, I'm going to talk about the upsets. Stephen F. Austin, like I said earlier, they're a great team, and man, was that walk up. He was a he's a great player. I'll talk about him later because he's one of my players of the day. But man, Stephen F. Austin really took it to West Virginia there at the end. I thought it was a close game. West Virginia's gonna make a run there late to pull away, but uh, Stephen F. Austin just really stood at that run, and took it, and they got right back up, and they ended up winning that game by, what was it, like 14, something like that. That's, that's quite the performance by St Stephen F. Austin, the 14 seed. Next, Middle Tennessee State. Man, 15 seed, like I said earlier, beating Michigan State, the second seed. A lot of people think they deserve the number one seed over Oregon, and clearly they didn't if they lose Middle Tennessee State. But Middle Tennessee State shot, if I can remember, just ridiculous numbers the whole entire day. And there's not a whole lot you can do when they're just hitting jump shots everywhere and you're even contesting them all. But like I said, Denzel Valentine played a very poor game, and I feel bad for that man because he's a heck of a player and maybe even player of the year, but he couldn't quite come through for them today in the first round matchup. Next is Hawaii over Kale. Like I said earlier, they are uh, a lot of people could have saw that one too, but Hawaii played really good throughout the whole entire game and closed in at the end to get about, what was it, a 77-66 win over California. A good performance by Hawaii. They're on the face of uh, Maryland. They could probably give Maryland all that they can handle as well, but I see Maryland coming away with that win. Then you and I being Texas, like I said, that buzzer beater was just crazy. Probably the best game of the day and best game of the tournament so far because there's two clutch shots in that game and that was just quite the game. Now the players of the tournament day two for me were Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald's my favorite player in the whole entire NCAA. Man, you just gotta love that guy, the way he plays, the way he gets to the basket, the way he shoots shoots those threes just over anybody and he's heck of a player. Next is Jake Lehman from Maryland. Uh, Melo Trimble's having somewhat of a sophomore slump, but Jake Lehman's really playing well. He's really like the glue of that team. You know Diamond Stone's going to get you some. You know Melo Trimble's just going to play his best. He's going to get you double digits. He's going to lead the team in assists no matter what game it is. But Jake Lehman, if he plays well, Maryland plays well, and that's what happened today. And now finally, Thomas Walkup from Stephen F. Austin. He was something like 19 of 20 from the free throw line, which just tells you how bad that game was called. Uh, foul wise but as we do know West Virginia does like to get up in you and they do have the most fouls so maybe it wasn't all the rest fault maybe it's just West Virginia they needed to adjust or something but it is a win for Thomas Walkup and Stephen F. Austin who probably I could definitely see making some sort of a run towards Notre Dame and maybe even farther in the NCAA tournament we'll have to see now, teams from the day that I could see making a run Texas A&M I could definitely see going very deep that region right there is not very good of a region to me when I look at it. So I could see them making a run. I could also see Oklahoma making a run in that same region if they get by VCU and then they'll play Texas A&M or UNI. Then I could also see Stephen F. Austin. I could see them, the way they pressure you and the way they get after you in their half-court defense and full-court defense and the way they're able to knock down shots and run the ball up the court. That's really tough to stop if you're not expecting and ready for it like West Virginia was not today. And lastly, I could see UNI making a great run with West Washburn and that team who really just it's so good efficient efficiency in their games. They really get things done on the offensive and defensive end if they're all playing together. And they played a very good team, a very good team in Texas today. And they did end up walking away with that win. And I could really see them giving Texas a number run, but we'll have to see what happens there. And I'm really excited for tomorrow's games. Around 32, I'm gonna get my predictions for tomorrow's game: Wichita State and Miami. 
Miami the three seed, Wichita State the 11 seed. I knew Wichita State was going to really play Arizona well, and they're a very good team defensively, like I said before. And they, I think they could honestly win that game against Miami. And even though they're 11 seed, they're 26 and eight. And without Fred Van Fleet earlier in the year, who really cost them a couple of games when they did not have him, he is just such a great player. He could definitely get that done for Wichita State. But we'll have to see. That'll be a good game. Yale and Duke. As much as people are loving Yale right now, I think Duke might run up that score with Grayson Allen and Brandon Ingram and really take it to Yale and get that win. Next is Indiana Kentucky. That's going to be a really good game. If you guys are not going to be tuned in for that one, make sure you're tuned into it. 4.15 p.m. Central Time. That's going to be one heck of a game. Tyler Ulyss against Yogi Ferrell. I think Kentucky does end up winning that game, but a very close game. Next is UN University of Arkansas Little Rock against Iowa State. Iowa State's just going to beat them. I think they're going to blow them out with George Niang and Neck and company. I think they're really just going to take it to Little Rock there and get a big-time win. Virginia and Butler, and Butler. I could see this one being a lot closer than people think. Virginia, a great defensive team. Maybe the best, if not the second best, against behind Wichita State in the tournament defensively. But Butler shoots the ball so well, and they have every position filled. Just They really can get it done, and I feel like they might. They may give Virginia a game, but Virginia wins just close, at least within 10 points, I believe. Next is UConn, Kansas. And UConn, they're a pretty good team on a really good run right now, and Kevin Ollie hasn't lost in the NCAA tournament yet, but Kansas is such a good team. I don't see them losing in the round of 32, but as you know, you and I, like, a few years back, they beat them in the round of 32, and no one thought anybody could beat the Morris brothers, but they definitely beat them. Um, next is Gonzaga, Utah. This will also be another great game. It'll be how Sabonis really plays in the post against Jakob Poitel, and that'll be a very good matchup to see. Because you know Kyle Wilcher's going to give you what he gets in his games, but it really depends on how Sabonis and Poitel will go after each other, and who wins that matchup will win that game. Next are Providence, North Carolina. I think Providence keeps this one close against North Carolina for quite a while, but I ultimately see... North Carolina getting a win by at least 10 or so because Marcus Page, Bryce Johnson, everyone on that team in each position is just so good for North Carolina. I can see them facing Kentucky in the Sweet 16. And that's going to be my predictions for the next day. But, man, I'm excited for the round of 32 games because there are some really good games to be played. And then, let alone coming up Sunday with such great games, it's going to be quite the weekend of college hoops. And, man, this is the best time of the year, March Madness. You've seen two clutch shots now, and they were ridiculous, St. Joe's and you and I. And, man, it's such a great time to be watching college basketball. But that's about all I have for today. Iowa's victory is great for me as a fan, but my bracket is busted like so many others in the nation who have really filled out a bracket. But, oh, well, I'm more excited about watching just good basketball games for the rest of the weekend and for the weeks to come because we're not even to the Sweet 16 yet. But that is all I have for today. And let me know what you guys think of the NCAA tournament so far. As always, I'm out. Peace.